Hello and welcome to my classic investments for TPC. I've made a timeline so it will be easier for you to actually find what you're looking for. I'll also be showing you all the materials to buy and explain why they're actually going to be useful. I'll be doing the same thing with the rare items and even show footage of the materials and why they're going to be useful in TBC. Dual crafting is the new profession in TBC and to level dual crafting you will need a lot of bars. I expect a lot of people to go engineering and even blacksmithing because they are going to be really useful in TBC as well, so this way there might be a huge demand for all bars. This item is not craftable in classic, but you can bring the classic mats into TBC in an outland you can find the trainer who let you learn this one, and this way with classic mats you can level your blacksmithing from 300 to like 320. These are the different bars I am investing into. And every time I've covered a category, I'll be showing all the materials that I buy. There's a few different reasons why I like to invest into ores. First off, we can always melt them into bars if those are more expensive. But with TPC dual crafting, and we can also prospect 5 ores into 1 to 3 gems. All the different classic stones will be needed by engineers, blacksmithers, and especially dual crafters. Here's an example, 8 heavy stones equal 1 level with dual crafting. Flask of Mojo, but also Heart of the Wild, are fairly cheap and classic right now. But with the introduction of TPC, you will actually need these to level up dual crafting, and that's why I expect them to go way higher compared to the current classic price. I also invest into gems, but some of the high level gems is not worth it to invest into right now. The reason for this is because they might be expensive, as some of them are needed for next runners. Sometimes you can buy star rubies and large opal for winter price. Get these as you can always just window them if there isn't a huge profit to be made. A lot of classic consumables are really useful in TBC. The people who dungeon farm or solo level will need them. That's why I like to invest into it. And in case I don't make a huge profit, then I can always use them myself to level up to 70 a bit faster. The dark runes are also used for Paladin's epic mount. With all the boosting going on in Classic right now, most cloth is actually fairly cheap. But in TPC, a lot of people will go tailor. The reason why people would like to be taters is simply because you can craft the Shadow Weave, Bell Club, and Primal Moon Club epic sets. If litter working is going to be mandatory by most guilds, then you can imagine the price for litter going up by a lot, because 20 out of 25 people will pretty much need litter working. You can also bring classic mats into TPC and level from 300 to like 320. I usually buy the large brilliant shards whenever they're really cheap, because in TBC Crusader will still be decent, and you can imagine the price for the new TBC enchants will be really high. I also buy Illusion Dust and this formula to level my enchanting in TBC, because in TBC you can use this one from 300 to like 330. Enchanting also changed in TBC, so now you can't be low level and disenchant everything. That's why bringing classic mats will definitely pay off instead of having to pay a lot of gold for the new TBC mats. Another material that will be really useful in TBC is going to be the Golden Sansom. The Alchemy Trainer in Outland will let you learn a healing potion. This requires Golden Sansom. And at 315 you can craft the Healing Power Elixir. This once again requires Golden Sansom. Totem of Storm is an investment for people planning to roll Draenei Shaman in TPC. This ring is not really useful in Classic, but in TPC it will give a lot more dodge and therefore might become more useful for 19 Twinks. Soulflame Shield is a bit risky as we don't know how many Blood Oath Paladins are planning to level as protection. A lot of the blacksmithing guides recommend that you buy these plants on the auction house to level your blacksmithing way easier. 
Therefore, I'm investing into them right now. The Scourge Invasion in Phase 6 is not permanently. And these bracers you can get from some of the rare monsters. I buy them for like 3 to 4 gold each on Auction House and you can always disenchant them into a large brilliant shot. Remember the bracers will also become unobtainable and therefore they will become rare at some point and hopefully more expensive. If you plan to prepare your account for TBC as much as possible, then I have other guides for that too. One way you can help me as a content creator would be to subscribe to the channel. This will also let me know if people would actually like to see more TBC guides in the future.